by the grace of God, we will round up this message to this week, I mean today, or um, by his grace um, next week. And then we'll go into kingdom order of, um, uh, what's it called? Of tithing. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Okay, now let me put a disclaimer out there. I must warn you that this is a message that will hit some people under the belly. So get ready. Amen. Uh, so it would hit some people under the belly. And, uh, but the purpose is to stir you up unto the blessing, the promised blessing of God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And for some, it's going to, you know, stir you up more into the direction in which you're running. Hallelujah. <clears throat> so today we'll continue on Kingdom Blessing Part 11. Kingdom Blessing Part 11. And I have subtitled it, The Place of Work in the Blessing. The Place of Work in the Blessing. Amen. Amen. The Place of Work in the Blessing. And I'm going to read from Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2, we're going to start from verse 1. One thing I have found and discovered in the Christian fold, in the Christian community, is that there is less emphasis on this word, work. There is less emphasis on the word, work. But one thing we must have... And should understand is the principle, the undeniable, irreplaceable principle of work in the scripture. In the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Amen. There is one thing you must have. And there is one thing you must always, always adopt. Is work. You can't do away with it. Hallelujah. And I want us to explore that today. So that you see how God uses that. Amen. To bring us the blessing. You find Christians. I'm trusting the Lord for a job. Yet he's at home. And he can pray three hours, four hours, five hours. I hear some people say, I pray 10 hours. But you look at them, they are so wretched. I say, I don't like the one that you pray. I don't like the God you pray to 10 hours. If you are praying 10 hours a day, every day, how much are you using to work? There's a balance to things. Amen. And that's what I want to address today. We need to bring the balance to the word of God. Because it's not all spiritual. Amen. There is the divine mandate, the Jesus mandate, and there is the Adamic mandate. Just because Jesus showed up on the scene does not erase the Adamic mandate. He's come to enable us and give us the strength and ability to fulfill our Adamic mandate. Amen. Let's go. John, sorry, Genesis chapter 2 verse 1. <laughs> Thus the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished. Verse 2. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he has done and rested on the seventh day from all his work which he has done. Hallelujah. Please don't tell me you are tired if you have not done any work. Amen. Now, let's go. Verse 3. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it he rested from all his work. Can you see work is being repeated here? And which God had created and made. Verse 5. 
That's where we're going. Verse 5. It says, before any plant of the field was in the earth, and before any herb of the field had grown, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain on the earth. Why? And there was no man to do what? Till the ground. <clears throat> what did he do? But he decided on an alternative. Many of us live on an alternative. He sent a mist up from the earth to water the whole face of the ground. And the Lord formed the man from the dust of the ground and breath into his nostrils, the breath of life, and man became a living being. What did he do with this man? And the Lord planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put man whom he had formed. Uh, and the Lord, and out of the ground, the Lord made every tree to grow that is pleasant and a sign good for food. The tree of life was also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of good of and tree of the goo of, of knowledge of good and evil. Understand? And now a river went out from the went out of Eden to water the garden, and from there it parted and became four rivered heads. The name of the first is Pishon. It is one which skirts the whole land of Avila, where there is gold. <laughs> there is gold where you are sitting. Gold. Next. And the gold of the land is good. Bdellium and onyx stones are there. The name of the second river was Gihon. It is one which goes around the whole land of Cush. <laughs> Basically, the whole Africa. The name of the third river is Hidiko. It is one that goes towards the, towards the east of Assyria. Uh, the fourth river is Euphrates. And the Lord, then the Lord took man. Then the Lord God took the man he had, took the man and put him where? In the garden to tend and what? Keep it. To tend and keep it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One thing we can see that is very evident here was God was working and he realized there are certain things that he needed to further maintain and manage. And for him in verse 5, put verse 5 on please. And God realized that one thing this whole earth needs is rain. But for me to send rain, there must be a man to till. If there is no man to till, the only thing I can manage is what? Mist. I'm going to just use mist. You know when you wake up in the morning, you see, you know, a place wet. Wet. What happened? Mist. But you know mist is not enough to sustain some plants. Huh? It's not enough to sustain some plants. But God decided on that until he found a man who will manage the earth. Amen. Listen, it was the idea of man for us to begin, begin what you call irrigation. It's not God's idea. It was the idea of man to network the whole place so we have tap in our houses. From the waters that's coming from the ground and the rivers. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because God has put in man that ingenuity. So I'm looking for a being who will come and till this ground, tend and dress it up. And then I'll send my rain. 
the reason why many have not really experienced the reign of God is because they are not available to attend and dress their garden. Amen. Let's explain a few things here. <clears throat> let's, let's have some definition. What do we mean by work? I looked up the dictionary. It simply has just about two, in my in summary, has about two definitions. An activity involving mental and physical effort done in order to achieve a purpose or a result. Or a mental or physical activity that serves as a means of earning income. Hallelujah. Earning income. <clears throat> now, when you look at the Hebrew version, I mean, when you look at the Hebrew word of work, it's a very, very interesting word. And I want us to exploit. Work means melaka. Is from the word melaka, or is the Greek Hebrew word melaka. Why do I want to bring this out? Because I want us to see it from a kingdom perspective. Are you getting it? I want us to see it from a kingdom perspective. What does it mean? To work means melaka. What does melaka mean? When you look at it, it's a compound word. It means to properly deputize. To properly deputize. It therefore means that it is God's agenda for you to do what you're supposed to do. But you are deputizing on his behalf. Amen. You are deputizing on his behalf. It means to be in ministry. I remember... It was in 2003, 2004, I think 2003. I was running a business then, a computer-based business. And I said, Lord, this is not what you've called me to do. This is, I'm, I'm going far away from what you've called me to do. What is going on here? And I heard God say to me clearly, everything you do, now, make sure you take it as what your calling is then. That is your ministry. So, because the Lord said to me that was my ministry, I poured myself in there. Amen. Now, what does this also mean? It means to have an employment. Amen. It therefore means if you don't have an employment, you are not working. You might be busy, but not working. You know, many people try to mix being busy and work together. No. You can be busy and then tired afterwards. But that's not work. Amen. Amen. It means to labor. It means to be in business. It means to be industrious. It means to have an occupation. It means to be an officer. An officer. Amen. <laughs> It means to have a manner of workmanship. That's work. Interestingly, it is from the same word, malak. Malak is what, is what you refer to as a worker. Amen. It is from the same word you have angel from. 
Have you heard the word malaika before? Those of you who come from the west, some part of Nigeria, you hear the word malaika a lot. And from the northern part as well. That's a Greek word. That's a Hebrew word. It means angel. It is the same thing as a walker. Malak means a deputy. It means a messenger of God. I've used the book of what? Malachi. Did you hear that? You remember? Eh? Malachi simply means the messenger. That is why we have arguments, in, in, scripture, in, in scriptural arguments, whether actually Malachi was written by somebody named Malachi or it was written by Ezra. There's that debate. Because Malachi simply means the messenger. So is it the name Malachi or is it messenger? Is it just something, is it, is it, is it Ezra that kind of wrote the book and then titled it the messenger? Because it was written in and around that period. Amen. Praise God. What am I trying to say here? It is the same word used... Compound word used for a prophet, a priest, or a teacher. It is a compound word that is also used for an ambassador or a king. It's so interesting to me that these words are, are actually part of this compound word. Why? Because the Bible says in Revelations, it says, and the Lord has made us what? He has called us to be what? Kings and priests. And we will do what? Reign. How are we going to reign? We will reign on the earth. How? By doing, You see all that? No, I don't do that. You can do all these when you have walked. People who feel they are called of God, they are anointed of God to preach the gospel, and they want to go into ministry. I tell them, let me explain what ministry is. W-O-R-K, that's the spelling of ministry. Ministry is spelled W-O-R-K. It's called work. Many times when young men come to me and say they want to work with me, I say, are you really sure you want to work with me? Can you handle it? Can you handle it? Because ministry is a serious business. Some people come to me and they see, when they come to my place, they see so many screens. It's like, how do you do it? Where, where, how, how do you come? I said, yes, I run it. Why? It's called work. The first commission we have on earth is what? Work. Not prayer. Not speaking in tongues. Not going to church. Like I, I, you know, I put a disclaimer earlier on. It will hit some people below the belt. So please. Allow me to preach. Amen. If you hurt you, just say, ouch. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> no! He put you there first to tend and the dress. My little baby here, who was here just a while ago, the only man that she has on earth now is what? Tend and dress it. Hallelujah. Because when you tend and dress, it's all part of what? Work. Let me skip all the other. In fact, let me go to that tending. Let me tell you what tending is so that you see. There are some few things there. Look at. To tend is also another word for work in any sense. All right? By implication, to tend is the word abad. Sorry, abad. is the Hebrew word abad. A-B-A-D. All right? Now, 
By implication, it means to serve, to enslave oneself, or to be enslaved, to execute, to be a husbandman, to keep, to be a laborer, to bring to pass. It means to become a servant. It means to be useful of service. It means to be a worker. Can you see? A bird. That means to tend. And the last one in stress me. It means to be a worshiper. When I saw it, I was like, Lord, you mean the work we do is actually an act of worship. And then you sit at home and you tell me you don't have work. And then you want to worship God. <laughs> you know, people use prayer as one serious matter. There is this thing going on now. I don't know if you know this wave going on now. That people now, what they do now is, I don't know, they, they have this way of speaking in tongues now that is online. Because see, they, there's this... Um, it's this way now where they sing the tongues. Eh? They all sing it. And you see this, there's a, there's a prayer mob going around of young people who are lazy. I've dealt with some of them. And I see, and you will see, they will post themselves on social media of how they are worshipping. And you're so impressed by it. Come, come and do this. You lose them. And this one wants to reign on earth. There's something wrong with you. Work! That's the first mandate we have. To be a worshiper. The first expression of your worship to God is not prayer, is not singing, is what? Work! Let no man deceive you. There are so many Christians who are supposed to stop praying by now. Just get out and get to work. Let me tell you, I pray. I pray hours. I pray. Are you getting what I'm saying? I pray. But you must track the balance. Pray like nothing, dep nothing depends on prayer. And walk like you've never prayed in your life. Jesus said, my father is working. I too am working. You can't stop me. Hallelujah. I'm going to give you profile 12 statements. 12 statements about work. And I'm just going to pace myself quickly. Number one, work is not as a result of the curse. Work is not as a result of the curse. It is a means by which God transfers his blessing, mostly materially and financially, to us. It's not because man fell that we work. Amen. I know, let's go to chapter 3 please. Let's go to chapter 3 of Genesis. Because that is one thing people miss. Let me show you the difference between this work and the one of chapter 3. Let's go to chapter 3 and let's see verse 17 from verse 17. He says, then, uh, that, uh, that, that, then to Adam he said, because you have heeded the voice of your, of your wife and have eaten of the tree which I commanded, of which I commanded you saying you shall not eat of, cursed is what? Cursed is what? Did he curse man? Did he curse man? What did he curse? The ground for your sake. So don't ever believe that a man is cursed. Amen. I've just knocked something out there. Now, 
In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. He's talking about work there, isn't it? Now let's continue. Both thorns and thistle it shall bring forth for you. You shall eat the herbs of the field, verse 19. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread. Till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken, for dust you are, and dust you shall return. Now that sounds like work there as well. Yes, it's work. But let me tell you, the reason why he's toiling is because there's no rain. In chapter, seven, in chapter 2, God was going to send rain. Are you getting it? Where? In Eden. As I taught you here, Eden is what? His presence. Can you find Eden anywhere in the world? You cannot. When you research, when you go and study the word Eden, you will know that Eden simply means his presence. So, you will toil when you are in his presence. When you're not in his presence. For example, I'll give you an example. Somebody came to me one day. I said, how do you do it? This person earns way more than I do. Let me say, this person earns about a thousand a day. Are you getting it? Yet, he's looking at me. By the time it was any 700, I was just maybe alone. Two or three hundred or something of that nature. And then he came to me and said, how are you doing it? I said, doing what? He said, ah, everything seems to come together. This is it. Small time I hear you bought this one. The next time I hear you've done this. And I said, how are you doing it? I said, look at somebody who is any more than times two or what how many. Asking me, how am I doing it? Why? I'm in Eden. He's not. I'm walking. He's toiling. Can you see the difference? Eh? My walk is blessed. His is not. I don't care how much you earn. If the blessing of God does not come upon it. Because that is what makes a man rich. That has no soul. Struggles and highs under the bottom. That's the difference. I don't care if I earn one pound. I don't care if I earn one pound. I can tell you for a fact. If it's blessed, it's more than a billion. So, Work is not as a result of the curse. There was work before the curse. The difference is this. God's reign, because he says, thistle, it will bring for you. The land is no longer blessed. The land is no longer blessed. If you live in a land that is not blessed, let me explain the land that is not blessed. If you are in a place where God has not assigned you. You know, when I was teaching out of the church, I've told you, if this is not your church, better find a way out. Amen. We are not a church looking for members. No. The Bible says, and the Lord added to them. Why am I saying that? Because I love you so much to prosper. So that you prosper. Because you need to be in the land that is blessed. You get it? Okay. So you need to be. So work is not a result of the curse. Work is a means by which God transfers his blessing on us. Number two. Work is God's idea for increase and productivity. Work is God's idea for increase and in productivity. Number three, 
Work is a gift of God. Work is a gift of God. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Verse 12 and 13. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 12 and 13, it reads, I know that there is nothing better for people than to be happy and do good in their lives. And also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor. What is this? It is the gift of God. The labor is the gift of God because that is what produces all the things you enjoy. But you don't use the gift of God. You want to sit down and be involved in the ministry of prayer, ministry of worship, and we reduce worship to songs. I write songs. I sing. I'm not against it. I'm simply saying precepts upon precepts. There is order in the kingdom of God. Number, th number four. There is a place God has put every individual to work. To till his ground. I've explained this already. And I'll give you a scripture for that. Hosea chapter 10 verse 12. Where it says break up what? Your fallow ground. Break up your fallow ground. Why? It is time to do what? Seek the Lord. Uh -huh. You want to worship? Start breaking up the fallow ground first. Get to work. Break up your fallow ground. Hosea chapter 10 verse 12. Just note that scripture. We're just going to go straight to the next. Number five. No one will till your own ground no matter how much they love you. Not even your husband or your wife can carry you in the long run. Hallelujah. Galatians says, chapter 6 says, let everyone carry their own burden. He says, bear ye one another's burden. And then two verses later, he says, everyone, carry your own burden. Carry your load. Work. Don't wait for your husband. Don't wait for your wife. You know when we were starting ministry, I know my wife would not like this one, but tell, tell you what, when we were starting this ministry, when, we, when I was about to go into ministry, my wife thought, I was just going to sit down after preaching on Sunday. I'll cross my leg and start watching TV on Monday, Tuesday. <laughs> and then, you know, and she thinks I was going to depend on her. I said, Look, I can retire you. I will retire you. Hallelujah. And when ministry started, I said, Catch me if you can. Hallelujah. I reduced her work to three days a week. And we don't. <laughs> do you know Jesus was never. Do you know Jesus never employed any. Any unemployed somebody. There was no unemployed man. Who was a disciple of Jesus. And you want to be a disciple of Jesus. Unemployed. Unemployed. Then you can be a disciple. Hallelujah. I know, I know this is a bit strange as a message in the church. What they want you to do is to bring your tithe. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay. God, number six, God will not send rain to, your, to water your ground until he can find someone to walk it. And the only person that can walk your ground is you, nobody else. 
You, number seven, you can never become what God wants you to be if you are not committed to work. Doesn't matter how you pray. Let your faith be as big, as massive as Kilimanjaro, as Everest. I don't care. Speak in tongue and fire is coming out of your mouth. I don't care. Let Jesus wake up and be showing himself to you every day. It doesn't move my feet. Are you getting the point? The most important thing is that you are committed. See a man diligent in what he does. He will not stand before mean men. He will stand before kings. Where did you come from that you think that all of a sudden it will drop on your laps? You are lying. You have to work. The children of Israel were promised the, were, were, were promised the, 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 the promised land. They went in there. Who did they meet? Giant. It's time to work. The Bible says in Judges, there were some, there were people that God deliberately left behind because there is a generation that doesn't understand work. They don't understand war. For me to teach them, if good people have got to be there so that they will torment them and they will get up and walk. Want to take a place? Get up and do something about it. Get up and do something about it. We see Christians live beggarly lifestyle. And when you look at them, it's laziness. Most poor people are lazy. I've lived and I grew up around them and amongst them. God separated me. I can tell you, I have no sympathy for a poor person. No! Lazy! Most of them, I didn't say all of them, most of them, lazy. Hallelujah. Number seven. No, number eight. Do not expect to excel in any life venture if you are not committed to, if you have not committed yourself to work. A failure at work, number nine, a failure at work cannot be a success in ministry. I've explained this earlier on. A failure at work cannot be a success in ministry. At least uh, I have a young man, my, some young men in this house who know how I burn the table from both ends. I work. It doesn't matter. Sickness does not keep me from working. None of you know in this church, I, was, I struggled for the two months. I was here. March and April. I still come here and preach like a house on fire. But none of you knew. Except the couple. Did that stop me from working? Did that take a day off one day from work? Because I know I have a mandate from heaven. And it commands me to do what? Work! Hey, I am ill. That's why I am not well. See, lazy bones. A young man came to me one day. I said to him, what are you doing here? Are you not supposed to be at work? He said, oh, I took the day off. My, my, I, I need to clear my head. I said, you, you must be, there's something wrong with you. You must be mad. You want to clear your head. What head are you clearing? Will you get back to work? It's the laziness we get in the kingdom of God. And we say, I, I, don't, I just need some time to be, to, be, to be led by the Spirit. After you have walked. After you have walked. God needs your walk to release his reign. Keep praying, Father bless me, Father bless me. Bless what? You are not walking. He says, I will bless the works of your hands. What are you doing? What employment do you have? He said, I have a skill. What skill? God is not saying skill. Work. 
when I finish from Vodafone, earning very good money, the next work I did was what? I went to start, I went to, to pick up a laborer job for six weeks. I was moving uh, um, um, motor parts into a crane and then shipping it to Egypt. You sit here and you tell me you think that you... No! You work! There's nothing that is too small to do. Say I'm a graduate and I have not... Seen. Work! Work. There's no work that is beneath you, no work that is above you. Work. I can't finish this today. I thought I would finish this today. Amen. Number, I said failure, number nine, failure at work cannot be a success in any ministry. Well, that is why Jesus did not choose any unemployed person. Everybody who worked for Jesus were gainfully employed. In fact, some of, most of them, he met them where? At their workplace. Eh? Peter, James, and John. Where? At the workplace. They were working. Matthew, the tax collector, at the workplace, they were working. They were working. They were working. When Jesus went up the mountain and they went to him, it was during their lunch break. They must have had lunch. Maybe Jesus had this lunch break meeting that they meet somewhere on the mountain. So they went there. But after that, they would go back to where? Walk. Get back to work. And don't use God as your excuse. I'm waiting on the Lord to lead me. It's a lie. Go and walk. Get out. And walk. A lazy person cannot worship or serve God. Number 10. A lazy person cannot worship or serve God. Sitting in the house and playing music and saying, oh, skiribu, skiribu, skiribu. He's not worshiping God. You are lazy. Go and walk. Somebody say, go and walk. <laughs> Hallelujah. I hope, um, I hope this is blessing you. I hope I'm still going to be friends with you after this. Amen. Number 11. Work does not kill. It does not kill. Work does not kill. It may stretch you. But there is what we call. But, but that is where the principle of Sabbath comes. God only rested after the work was finished. Not during the work. There is one thing my wife struggles to have me do. Is to eat during work. I forget about food. I don't even remember there is food. I'm walking away. Hallelujah. You know what I do these days? The people I mentor, what I do them, what I do to them these days is I tell them, come, come to my house. Come to my house. And I sit them where I walk. I sit them where I walk. I want to show them. So that this thing is not just by mouth. Done it to a few here. Sit. Just watch me. Watch me work. Watch me work. And they go, how do you combine it? I said, yes, that's what I want you to learn. That's what I want you to learn. And that's why you need to grow. Stretch yourself. When you go back home, you just fall like this and fall asleep. And you just fall the Bible says the sleep of a liberal is what? Is sweet. <laughs> you sleep and you go, <laughs> he's walking. He's walking. Walk! It doesn't kill. Does it hurt your body? Oh, yes, it will. Oh, a time came, my wrist was hurting me so badly. Did that stop me from walking? No. A time came I could not sit down for months. 
Did that stop you from working? No. Either way, they will be paying. <laughs> Hallelujah. That is where the Sabbath rest comes in. So you rest. Take some time out and rest. And number 12, work applies to everyone. Male, female, young, old. Work applies to everyone. In the Hebrew culture, you know when you start working? By the age of 13. As soon as you come of age at Bar Mitzvah, work! They put you in a bakery. It's not helping your father out. And here we are. That's why my daughter, I put her to work. She knows. You don't come late. When you come late, I scold you very well, isn't it? Yes. She work all day. So that when you grow up, you know it becomes part of you. It doesn't come cheap. And when she walks, I pay her handsomely. Say, hey. And now she goes around to tell her friends, I'm walking. I walk for so so and so. I just I say, I say, good. Can you see? There's pride. Why? It's a gift of God. Walk. Amen. I'm not going to be that pastor who will tell you, let's pray about it. I ain't praying nothing. Work. <laughs> Hallelujah. No. You see, we hide under so many guises so that we don't hurt the member. You can go. After I've preached today, if it hurts you so bad, that's the door. But I will preach the unsearchable truth of God's word. Work is your number one worship. Before you kneel before him, what have you done on his earth? How have you improved the earth? What have you put in as value? Hello? Your home chores is not work. The fact that you're busy at home is not work. Let me say this to our ladies. Don't use the excuse of your children as work is not work. There is a blessing of work and there is a blessing of children. The two different things. Don't use one blessing to leave it another. Ask my wife. When Joanne was born, <laughs> she, she said, oh, I'm going to take this. I said, you, take what? Can't go back to work. Two months, go back to work. Are you not healthy? He said, yeah, but I just gave up. So what? Did your mother give birth to? Go to work. Amen. Two months. Jonathan, two months. Do I need the money? No. It's a principle I abide with. That is why I'm blessed. It's the principle of the word. I don't play to sentiments. I don't play to sentiments. I don't play to the gallery. Work. You know what? She's the most senior doctor now. Next to the clinical, uh, this thing. They are already pitching her for a clinical director role. Why? She put in the work. When everybody was going to sleep, she was what? Working. Work is beautiful. If you don't walk, you cannot grow. Put that number 13. It just came into me. If you don't walk, you can never grow. All your mates will leave you behind. And you keep dilly-dallying and complaining. A complainer is somebody who does not walk. Get to work. 
The only answer to your question is what? Walk. The only answer to your prayer is what? Walk. Walk. Let me tie this up. And then um, next week we'll conclude it. Because I promise not to take our time anymore. I want to deal with this myth and then tie it up. The myth, there's a traditional myth that men are the ones to work and provide while women are the ones to sit down at home or less provide. You've just, please, as a woman, I want you to dismiss that in your life. My wife knows this. I, I, some young men were asking me one time, a long time ago, they were asking me, what, so what's your dream? What's your life goal for your family? What's your vision for your family? I said to them, my simple vision for my family is this. I want a situation whereby they don't need me. I can walk out of that house and the only thing they will feel is my absence. Nothing more. Hallelujah. I want to empower every member of my family such that nobody needs me anymore. They can stand on their two feet. Amen. Right now, I can walk through the door and walk out. My wife does not need me. My children, they don't need me. By the grace of God. Why? Because I walked. I, del I was deliberate about it. And when I achieved it, I called those young men who asked me the question. I said, I have achieved what I, what I told you about. And I'm not stopping there. Walk. I'm not stopping there. I've carved out another vision again. <laughs> We're going. Walk. Now I want to leave a lasting legacy. A lasting legacy for my family. So. Most times you see this scripture being banded around, banded around. First Timothy chapter 5 verse 8. Please put that on. I'm going to deal with this simply and then end it. Please do not believe a lie of the devil, ladies. Because when you carefully study the scriptures, women are the ones who actually did more work than men. If you carefully study the scriptures. If you read Ecclesiastes, I'm uh, sorry, 1 Timothy chapter 5, sorry. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8. When you read the book of Proverbs chapter 31, you will see that this woman was a walking woman. So don't appropriate Proverbs chapter 1, verse, chapter, Proverbs 31 to yourself if you do not walk. If you are not walking, you are not a Proverbs 31 woman. Neither are you a man if you don't walk. I'm not a man if you don't walk. Let me show you this scripture. It says, but if anyone does not provide for his own, especially for his own household, he, he has denied the faith and was than an infidel. And immediately, what do we do? We think it belongs to a man. And we use that to flog every man. It's not work. Amen. But look at that. It says, if any... And that scripture is not even talking about man and woman. Hello? That scripture is not referring to man and woman. When you look at that scripture, you go back and read it. It's talking about providing for widows and relatives. Widows. Are you a widow? Do you need to be provided for? Huh? It's just, there's no time. If you go back up to verse 1 and you see, you see it. Are you a widow? Do you need to be? It says, you don't be, uh, verse 2. Let's go to verse 2. Verse, verse 3. All no widows who are really widows. Go on. But if any widow has children or grandchildren, let them first learn to show piety at home and repay their parents. And to repay their parents. For this is good and acceptable. What? Before God. Let's go on. Now she who is really a widow and left alone trusts in God and continues in supplication and prayers day and night. But she who lives in pleasure is dead as why she lives. Verse 7. And these things command 
and that they may be blameless. But if anyone does not provide for his own, why? Provide for who? His widow. Are you a widow? Why then do you want your husband to provide for you? Let me tell you, there is no body born of a woman that is capable enough of providing for you. Nobody. The moment we got married, I told my wife, I can't, I can't provide anything for you. If I before we got married, I don't. if you wait for me to provide for you, you're in trouble. So she doesn't have that psyche of me providing for her. I won't give you nothing. Go on, walk. That is why you have homes as soon as the man walks out or is no more as a result of death. What happens? Everything loses, dives. Everything becomes messy. A wonderful home, a pretty couple, and all that. Things happen and everything is all in a mess. Why? Because the woman was never empowered. Amen. A sister of mine one day rang me and said, Oh my God, I'm in trouble. I'm, I'm, I'm struggling, blah, 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 blah. And the husband wants her because the husband is, you know, boxed up and wants her not to walk and to sit down at home and just look after the children. And I said to her, let me tell you, the person God knows is not Mrs. XYZ. The person, know, the person God knows, and I called her name as, is this person, is you. God will not ask after Mrs. XYZ. God will ask after you. What has he given you? And what are you putting it to use? And I told her, on the grounds of God's word, you have my permission to disobey your husband. Go and get something to do. And I told her, I've given you a target. By this time next year, I'm expecting so and so million from you. I chased her, pursued her. Today she's doing well. Her name is Grace. You know her. She's in millions today. But four years ago, sorry, about six years ago, she was asking me for 10,000 pounds, 10,000 naira. That's 20 pounds to feed. Yet, you have things in you that can release millions. Go and walk. Today, she doesn't wait for the husband to bring money for soup. Then they rain insults on you. And then you receive uh, what a bondage. Don't ever bring yourself under the bondage of any man. Because there's no man born of a woman that can provide enough for the preciousness of who you are as a woman. Hallelujah. So, let me tie this. Because the Bible says there is no Greek, sorry, there's no male nor female. So everybody is entitled to the same thing. There is nothing that says, ah, uh, this is women. <laughs> Circumcision in the kingdom is for what? Everybody. The circumcision of the world is for male alone, isn't it? Because that's the way it is designed. But for the kingdom is everybody. There is no male nor female. Because it's the circumcision of what? The heart. No male nor female. So don't expect in the kingdom to be a female. No. Rule and reign as what? King, not queen. King. You stand and you wear your, your, your crown. But what gives you your crown? Walk. And lastly, let me show you this. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 9. I'll continue and finish this next week. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 9. What does it say? It says, Two are better than one. Because they have good reward 
for their labor. You want your family to be better? You want your family to be better? Don't allow only one person to work. If you want your family to be better, there is no scripture that says the woman must sit at home. No scripture. Housewives. Because the wives are in the house. It didn't say street wives. That whatever you are, house husband, housewife, house this, it does not matter. The Bible talks about what? Labor. Are you getting what I'm saying? I don't know where you found your housewives from. It's an English word. It's born out of the English culture. The African has it. Can you imagine? Housewife, occupation, sitting at home. Those are the busy bodies that the Bible talks about. It says keep away from them. Keep away from those busy bodies. Housewife. Is that a ministry? Is that a calling? Give me a scripture for it. Then we stand on the word of God. As children of God, we base ourselves on the word of God. Not on, on culture. Not on sentiment. Housewife. House husband. Nonsense. Because with or without you, the children will not be looked after. Let me tell you, with or without you, your child will grow up and will fulfill God's purpose for their lives. So they don't need you at the end of the day. Give it 18 years, they're out of your house. 18 years comes like that. Look at, look at, look at my little girl. Look at her. Look at her. That's, that's the same girl of that day. Now she's my admin assistant. Are you getting what I'm saying? How's what? Don't descend, you can't descend yourself to that beggarly level. Because God has commanded us to work. Two are better than one. They both have good reward for their what? Labor. Work together. Work. If your wife is working, your husband is working. Watch and see the explosion. The Bible says one will chase a thousand. Two will chase ten thousand. What are you chasing now? Let's bow our heads.